The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look here at the Treasury bonds. We went up into our sell zone here. Market immediately dropped uh, almost $1,500. Uh, it hasn't even rallied back to the 382 as of yet. We'll take a quick look to see what that number will be. Uh, we've already made the first profit objective because we were risking – Oh, by golly, it did make the first 382 right there. I saw that uh, a little bit late, but there it is at 208. So you made your first profit objective on this. The worst thing that could possibly happen is to put your buy stop in here. You lock in at least $600 or possibly $800. But your first profit objective, you're risking a point. When you make a point, in fact, you, went, you made quite a bit more than a point, you've got to take some of that off the table because, you know, you're looking at an hourly chart. And you don't know what's going to happen next, as we already know that. So let's just keep in mind, you know, what we're watching here. You're looking at these things. Now, we just made, for those of you that are uh, 382 aficionados, we just made a 382 here in the E-mini S&P here just a second ago, right up at the old 347.96 level. So let's, uh, you know, you might want to look at that. But whether this is going to be a new high or not, we'll have to wait and see. The fact that it did break you know, 60 handles to the downside uh, in a matter of a short period of time, about uh, three and a half hours. And you had some nice ABCDs on the way down here. You can see that there's your ABCD to the downside. Stopped right at very strong support would be my guess. Let's just double check it here. Looking at this 13 minute one and we'll move it over. And uh, let's just go to the, well, what we've got to do here is to clean out all of this real easy like and move it over just a tiny little bit and see where our support would be coming in here. And it's probably close to 50%. It looks like our last little low here was January 8th. You remember the King's birthday? Put that over there, and we hit right at the 50% level here today. And so far, what we've done is backed up to the 382 level right in here. So let's watch that as we're looking at some of these things here here today okay now um, but by the way your first 382 on this came in at uh, 4808 and it dropped uh, 20 handles down to this level which more than uh, made up for any loss you might have taken here because it has had a really nice 382 off of this little move right there you can see it right there this is a only took 40 minutes to do it but that's right after the open and then uh, down she came so that's what we're watching here with some of these things that we're paying very close attention to okay now let's look at another one over here because we've covered the bonds we've covered the s&p now let's go to the old precious metal because if you like three twos folks you're going to be really surprised when you look at this chart i didn't see this until a tiny bit later but look at this folks this is we're going to have to put this on an hourly so you can see the strength of this move coming into this look at the look at the range here folks there was your low here that we had yesterday we rallied all the way up to right between the 61 and the 786 there's 61 there's 786 there's the 1.618 expansion of this whole move right there right on the money at 2056 and look what's happened down she came now those of you that have been following me here day after day we look like we're heading down to make a big ABCD down here right around that 2000 level. So we're going to look at this right now. You've got your high here. There's A right there. There's B right there. There's C right there. And now it's saying it's coming in. There's your 1.618. And that comes in here at 208. So tomorrow, folks, maybe today, you want to be taking a really good look here at the gold here at 208. That's a, that's a pretty good thing to watch. Let's just double check. Here's a case where we had to add those questions yesterday. How do I go back from one time frame to the other? Well, all I'm trying to do is make sure I don't miss anything. You know, and see on this one, 
you see I'm looking to be a buyer now at 2.8 on this on this pattern right here because this happened today. So I've got a new pattern to look at. There's your ABCD there. So there's my new pattern coming in right here. I have two others at this level right here. So 208 is going to be my buy, and my stop is going to have to be below this level right here. So I, I'm just bringing that to your attention. But the interesting thing about this today on this smaller time frame, and I was, I was in there doing a lot of things today, folks, trying to keep up with all the things. But look what happened to the gold after we hit that 1.618 expansion here. The market broke all the way down. It, drove, it dropped 27 handles to the downside. And look at the upside. It stopped exactly at the 382 at 2039. Boy, you, you, you just can't make this up. I mean, it's got to mean something because that tells us that we're heading down to these levels right here. And that's where I think we're heading is down to this level right around 2012 to 2008. So let's uh, watch that very, very closely. Just to be safe here, if you want to watch this uh, the rest of the day, I will not be doing this. But if you move this over, you might even get another rally up into here, which would be a 50% off of that level. Or you might only make a 382. So let's draw that in. So that would tell us that we shouldn't get any higher then uh, 2025 here, that's uh, what the bottom line is uh, trying to tell us as we look at some of these things. So I, I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're watching here uh, this morning. Okay, one other one that is uh, interesting here, and that is the natural gas. Here's the natural gas on a, on a short-term basis. We had the big break, if you'll remember. We want to get the hourly up because you'll be able to see that uh, – we did make the uh, 382 retracement here this morning, and uh, we'll just bring it up so you can see where we are. We went right up, uh, excuse me, the 50% is where we went to. It went to 64, and that's really what, that's really all that it's done. And uh, hold on just a second, <laughs> just a second, just a second. Uh, Bill, I got him on the radio show right now. Oh, boy, I kind of forgot to change an order, folks. It's going to cost me a couple hundred bucks. Okay, but anyway, that's what I'm watching here today here with the natural gas. Um, this has been a pretty big break. You know, we had this move here uh, on the daily. Let's go back to the daily here. And, uh, oh, man, I'll tell you. Okay, just want to get this. This is the daily, and you can see here where we've come here. And there's the big 382 here that we're looking at for today you know, to uh, to be a seller, and that's where we were looking at it right here, at the 382 here at 67. That's in the March, okay? So that's what we were – that was two days ago. So it's starting to work, and, you know, that's a that's a good sign. So let's uh, let's see, make sure we get something else up here to look at this, and we'll see where we are. Okay, okay, S&P is now rallied above the 382. Let's break – take a little break here. And we'll be right back, okay? 877-927-6648. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, Education investors.
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, folks, what I would like to remind you of, if you sold this here at 47.97, your stop has got to be here at 48.07. You're only going to risk 10 points on this, okay? Because you're right at the 382 right now. You went a little bit higher. You've been as high as 48.01, but your stop has got to be at 48.07. What happened to me is I had sold this here, and I forgot to cancel the second order, so I ended up being short six. And I didn't, want, excuse me, short four. So I just covered the position, which will get me out of basically break even. Because if I'm doing this, we want to be watching it. It's actually having a thunderstorm here in uh, Tucson here this morning, folks. So that's going to be real interesting to, to see how this stuff all works out. All right, let's get together here with Mr. Rich Anderson, who will be coming on tomorrow. And the reason why I'm going to switch gears here, because we've got a trade coming up here. I've got a couple of questions that I have to answer, folks. But I want to show you, this is the July soybean chart that we've been watching for a very, very long time, three days. <laughs> For me, that's a long time. Here's where we are, folks. And we've got this big report coming out tomorrow at around 11 o'clock. Rich is going to be our guest tomorrow. We're going to go through, you know, what uh, what's going on with it. It'll be out by now, I believe. And so we'll be watching it. But this is what we'd like to do. We want to see a real bearish report tomorrow and get it down to here at around 1214. Okay? That's the 78% level. Do we know it's been here for four days? So this may be the low. We don't know that, but if it's a bearish report, it should get to here, and we can become farmers at that time. What we did is we measured from the high down to your low. You see how it brings you down into this zone right here? So there's the zone where we want to get down to. It's right about here, the 78% level at this level right here. And when a report comes out, folks, you know we know that they're very, very volatile most of the time. The good part about this is if we miss it, if we do miss it, I, believe me, I am, I'm extremely bullish gold, uh, the, the soybean complex, and I'll, I'll show you why in just one second. But that's why we want to be, and this is new crop beans, excuse me, this is old crop beans. They have a, Larry, get your act together. This is not July, this is January. This is going to be a, a new crop soybeans. They haven't even been planted yet. 
So now they're guessing at where it's supposed to be, and believe me, it is a flat-out guess. So that's what we want to be watching, okay? Now, the reason for it is we have some good information from Rich, and that is this is the uh, commitment of traders. I'm going to bring this up so that you can see it. We've got a call coming in. You'll notice here that the things that they're looking to buy, you notice soybean down in here? Here he's looking to be a buyer because commercials have moved over. Look what they're short, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell. And I think we have a caller coming in uh, from uh, Cocoa Beach, Florida. Lauren, what can I do for you? Hi, I'm looking Hi, um, I'm looking at ARN Holdings. Um, I'm wondering whether it's going to hit its target of 85 or whether it's going to continue on this small minor abc down that i'm seeing happen okay. right now i mean i'm, AR, I'm an a to b b to c c to d person as well okay and, good <laughs> um, it looks to me like it could be doing that or it also looks to me like it could be just taking a minor retracement and heading back up into a rising price channel I I have to go with you on the downside. This is what I think is happening here. I see the ABCD from 80 uh, down to 64. We rallied up exactly to the 61% retracement. To me, that means you're setting up for an ABCD swing to the downside. It's going to get you down to about $61. And if you look at that from your low up to your high, you'll see that's going to take you uh, just halfway between your 50% and 61% retracement. It's at 69 right now, so I'm assuming that we're, boy, I might be off the air here in a minute, folks, because there's really a major storm here. But 61, Lauren, is what you're looking at right here. That makes sense to me because, uh, you know, we had a 61% retracement here two days ago, and we're lower today. That means that we've got a bias to the downside from what I can see. Got it. Thank you. Does that Larry. does that help? Is that what, it's my pleasure. It is that what help. you were looking Thank you for? Thank you very much. You're well. You're welcome. Thank you for calling in, first time caller, and I appreciate it. Okay, let's get back okay. here and to talk a little bit more about these beans. So, what our game plan is is we'll have the order setting here tomorrow at around twenty one twelve twenty one fourteen is where we're going to be buying it. Let's try it again, Larry. Twelve. Oh dear, that's not good. Hold on, just a second. That is not good. I've got to get the uh, thing back up again. Hold on. There's so much rain hammering on the uh, skylight here, folks, that I can hardly hear. <laughs> it's really, really heavy. Oh, my, it's getting really big now. I'm going to type this in so we can see it. We'll be doing this tomorrow, too, because this is a big trade. It could be in for a long time. might only last 20 minutes. But here, we're going to be buying here at uh, 1215, and we're going to put a stop at uh, – 11.95. You're going to be a farmer. It's going to cost you a thousand bucks. You're going to buy at 12.15, and you're going to put a stop here at 11.95. That would be way down here. And you know, if you get hit, believe me, you don't have to go out and uh, you know buy the farm equipment. You don't have to lease the land. All you do is you buy the soybeans for July. They haven't even been planted yet, so you don't even have to. Wow. You don't even have to. I'm saying wow because this place is shaking. <laughs> oh. Oh, it just stopped. Oh, my God. Just like that. Oh, that's great. And anyway, we're going to buy it at 12.50. Here it comes again. 11.19, 11.95 as a stop. Boy, that, that you should you should hear it, folks. I don't know if you can or not, but, boy, this is really a, a heavy rain that we're having here today. Okay, let's move this one out of the way. And I want to uh, find out what happened to my uh, layout page. It disappeared for some reason. Uh-oh, this is not a good sign. I, oh, here we come. We're coming up here right now, so bear with me here. Just pop up, and we'll be uh, we'll be ready to go here, and uh, we'll see what's going on. Hold on one second. I want to get this right here is the uh, soybean oil because we've been in this for quite some time. We're right up at our objective right in here, and with the report, remember on the daily, folks, let's get this up here. You'll see where we are. There's the daily that we bought it at. Uh, this is like what we're hoping to do in the soybeans. Now, soybean oil is only 20% of the product. The other 80% uh, is meal, and so we're going to be looking at meal and soybeans. We'll do meal uh, tomorrow because we've got Shane coming up at the break, but here's where we are. Uh, we're right at our profit objective, and the, the way we figured that, there was your ABCD right here. The last move extended that much, and these we know these markets repeat over and over again. 
And so we're almost there right now. So this is the time where you want to be taking profits, especially into a, a major crop report. This has been a good winter, folks. It's well over 12. It's been, let me see, six, seven, eight. Oh, wow, it's pretty good. A little over $1,200. So that's uh, what we'd like to do. We're risking six. We made 12. So that's two to one. And that makes it nice. Now it's total silence here in the desert. The, the monsoon is finished because when it comes down, it comes down in buckets. And then it leaves and doesn't come back for quite a while. We've got to take a break now. And the, the master himself, Mr. Shane Smolian, the wolf trader.com, will be coming up and we'll listen to what he has to say with these uh, volatile markets that we're seeing right now so we'll uh, hang in there and uh, stay with us we'll be right back after this words of our sponsor Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have the wolf trader himself on the line today. Shane, how are you doing? Is this Duke and Duke? Duke and Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19147. Suite number six. I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place. You got it. 
You got it. Tell us what you're looking at, my friend. We'd like to hear the words of wisdom from someone who really understands astrology, and that certainly is you. So please tell us what you're looking at. Well, thank you. First of all, are you okay with the weather there? Sounds kind of. We crazy just had a there. hail. It was a hailstorm. Sarah just yeah, came you, in to you, tell me we that we had golf golf ball size hail. That's what the whole, what the news was. But it happens in the desert, you know, because it's cold. Yeah. It was 29 here. It was 29 here. There'll yeah, be snow a, in the mountains. There's, yeah, there's yeah. a hard freeze warning for Tucson. Yeah, there's that big that yeah. big front's moving across the Midwest, and there's this Arctic blast coming down. It's in it's in Western Canada right now, but it's going to move all the way down across the United States. We had that storm last week, and this one's going to be yeah. even stronger. But this yeah. time there's that big Arctic push behind it, so that's that's what that is. That's a big front it's, coming through. So yeah. it's part of that global warming thing. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's yeah. go ahead and talk about something we might understand. Absolutely. Where are we, so where are we going from here? Where are we? Tell us. Well, I like to start out with the geomagnetic storms just to give everybody a, a viewpoint of where we are from a seasonal standpoint. So the reason I tie these two together is because the solar storms correlate inversely to the seasonal pattern. And uh, the solar storm activity right now, we're in, we're in January, and it's kind of uh, it's tapering off right now, but it will start to pick up February, March, and April, which tends to correlate with uh, falling markets. So if you put these two graphs together, um, you can see that as these solar storms start to pick up, you can see that the peak, uh, the Dow Jones actually peaked, peaking right about now. Everybody knows there's positive seasonals until about this part of the month, uh, but now it's going to be falling as the solar storm activity increases. So... Uh, you know we're kind of, we're we're pretty far up there right now in the S and P, and I think I think if the S and P had its way, it would definitely try to push to a new high, uh, but nothing is guaranteed, and it's it's looking kind of ragged here. The lat we've had some some pretty strong thrusts down, probably three of them now we've seen. So to me, it's starting to look a little bit tired here at this point. Uh, but again, like I said, if it wanted if it had its way, I think it would try to make that try to make that new high. But anyway, so from a seasonal standpoint. Uh, we are we are definitely uh, at a peak right now for the S and P 500. So and I and again I like to talk about that with the with the actual solar storms because there is a direct inverse correlation there. Uh, so do the solar storms cause the the, uh, the solar cycle or is it just a correlation? It's, there's no way to know that, but they do correlate pretty much perfectly inversely. So uh, I'm I'm just going to talk about some key points here on the S&P 500 and I and I do also want to talk about Bitcoin because of the ETFs just came out and that's going to be changing uh, how we should look at Bitcoin and I and I'm not really even sure yet I I'm starting to ask some questions about how how has Bitcoin changed and how is it going to change in relation to the markets uh, because I do think it's going to change now but in terms of the S&P it's pushing back obviously we saw that uh, is this a double top or is it going to try to make another high I don't think it really matters. I mean, it, even if it tries to push up, I don't think there's really much more left here on this rally. I think we're getting the very, very end of this. Uh, now, the one thing I, I am looking at is are these substantial negative divergences. This is true in money flow and the Fed juice. There's two really very large uh, negative divergences. Uh, so money flow is pretty reliable, but the Fed juice, the Fed internals, this is very reliable. There are no instances of this since 2009. There's no documented instances of this type of a divergence that does not retrace. So I think the odds are in our favor that we're going to have some type of a pullback here. The question is how how far and how long. Uh, so what we try to do here is time those events and try to time everything together to try to get that just right. Um, Fear greed index, I, you know, this has been high. It's, it's 73, 74. And even when we had those two declines, uh, it still stayed up into the 70s, which I think is a good sign if, you know, for, from a shorting perspective because even when we get these sell-offs, people are not believing it. And so the optimism is still staying high. Now, the Russell and gold have been weaker. Um, so these have been laggards. So the Russell has been falling behind the S&P. Uh, and it's, you know, it barely rallied in this last rally. You know, the S&P was leading, NASDAQ was second, Russell was third. But the Russell looks very weak, as does gold. Now, the question is, is this fallout from the Bitcoin ETF? Is this money, these types of investors moving their money to the Bitcoin ETF? Hard to tell. Uh, but I do think uh, the Bitcoin situation is not going to be good for gold here. I think gold looks very weak at this point. Uh, and so as Bitcoin gets the spotlight, I think gold's going to struggle here, uh, at least in the near term. Now, Bitcoin. I do think there was some hype here with Bitcoin that drew up the S&P, and, and they do correlate together. When, when we first get a move, when we start to get the risk on trades, Bitcoin tends to lead the S&P. Uh, so I do think there was some type of a masking event here, but now that the Bitcoin ETF has come out, 
Um, S&P had his sell-off this morning. It has recovered a little bit in the midday, but I think maybe that was some type of a masking variable that kind of drew it up and uh, teased out, uh, you know, just kind of teased it up uh, into the new moon today. So I don't, I don't know if that's a real thing. I mean, in terms of the strength in the S&P or if it just kind of, it, it's hard to tell because this has never happened before with a Bitcoin ETF. So I'm kind of trying to look at this. And one of the, one of the things that I try to do is I try to pay attention to what's actually like new events that are happening and unfolding in the markets. Uh, this happened in 2009 with the Fed use and quantitative easing. And every time there's something new like an ETF, I try to understand, okay, how is this changing the market and what markets will be affected positively, what markets will be affected negatively. Uh, we talked about the optimized Bradley. There's a high approaching to this. We'll talk, uh, we'll talk about that. We'll get to that chart. And so that's coming up pretty much this weekend. Uh, so, I, you know, we're, we are hitting a series of highs here, uh, no matter how you look at this in terms of different cycles. Um, the volatility quad lunar is approaching a low, uh, and that's going to happen like tomorrow. So there's a lot of events here now lining up. And then we have the planetary steliums coming in this first half of 2024. Uh, and and the, the context of that is going to depend upon where the market is going. If the market's rallying and breaking out, they can tend to be positive. If it's falling, they can tend to be low, so I'm going to go through some charts and just show that. Uh, so we do we do have our intraday biorhythms here that we track, and uh, we we posted this this morning. And so far, the S&P is following this pretty pretty closely. We had this sell off here uh, after the the hotter than expected inflation report, and so it's coming into the midday hour here, and it's, this says it will have some type of a, of a recovery into the close. But I do favor this market getting weaker. Uh, it's just, I think we're just in the final throws here. Of this, and it's been a very, very impressive rally, no doubt, uh, since late October. But I think we're getting near the end here. But we do look at this even on a micro level, like this on the intraday. Now, Bitcoin, I do want to just put some points here. I, I'm going to come out and do a, a webinar on this at some point. I, I, I really, I'm just kind of asking some questions right now about this. Uh, I do think the ETF changed Bitcoin. Uh, this is some type of an experiment. Uh, we, you know, we have a fixed underlying now because obviously Bitcoin is fixed in supply. So we got to ask ourselves, how is that going to affect the ETF? Is it going to be more stable or is it going to be less stable? Is it going to be more volatile, less volatile? Right now, it appears that it's kind of shoring up the volatility. But, uh, you know, that remains to be seen. So that's just a kind of a question mark. Uh, ETFs now, it, it can tend to draw money away from different markets. So we didn't see that as much. Bitcoin was really a closed system. It was kind of its own thing. Uh, it did correlate with S&P when we'd have these risk on type moves. Uh, but that might change the relationship between Bitcoin and the S&P. And I'm going to start to research this because typically they tend to go to – Bitcoin would lead. So if you go all the way back to COVID, and every time that we had these big lows, Bitcoin would surge and then S&P would follow it. But now it, – we, we got we a have break. Sure. Got to pay some bills. Absolutely. So stay with us. We'll be back with Shane Smolian, folks. WolfTrader.com. Stay with us, please. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hey, we're back, folks. We're Shane Smolian on the line. Please continue, young man. All right. So I was just kind of posing some questions here about BT. What does the ETF mean? Uh, I think it's possible the correlations could change between Bitcoin and S&P. Uh, it, could, it could end up being, they could be the opposite. I mean, they could start moving in opposite directions as these ETFs gain steam. So this is a big deal. Uh, and then the other question is, is gold in trouble? Uh, gold looks very weak here. Uh, you were talking about that 2002 level down into there. And that's, that's, right where it gapped up after that last Fed meeting. Uh, so I do think gold, at least on the short term, uh, Bitcoin's kind of stealing the, the spotlight here from it. Mm -hmm. So those are just my thoughts. I haven't really kind of formulated any opinions. I'm just kind of asking questions right now. But I think we have to ask these questions because every time something happens, it introduces a new variable to the market. So if we, if we want to understand where the stuff's going to go, we, not, we need to understand this. So I felt like I had a good... Uh, handle on this you know especially since the covid and the, and the correlations but now this might change things so uh fear and greed index i do want to talk about this you can see this is all the way up to 74 this is this is from uh, cnn it's like 73 74 it's pretty high and even on those sell-offs that we saw those multiple sell-offs it didn't really budge it just kind of stayed up there uh which which is a good sign for a top i mean you want to see people not believing uh the selling and this is this is an intraday comparison here of the Russell versus S&P versus NASDAQ. You can see that uh, this is the Russell over here. This is the the, the S&P here, and this is the NASDAQ. And and you can see that the, the S&P was the strongest. It did try to come up and hit that high again. Uh, but you can see the Russell was just very weak into here. Uh, now, I don't know if that has something to do with the type of investors that were moving to Bitcoin or whatever it was, or if it's just the, the Russell is weak right now for other reasons. But it is it is lagging. Uh, and so to me, that's not a good sign. I mean, I definitely would, if I was expecting this market to keep rallying from here, I would like to see the Russell pushing up there, especially the NASDAQ too. These two uh, can tend to lead on the early moves. So to me, this is this is not a good sign. It's starting to look very ragged into here. We've had these three pushes down here. This is the third one down here. So it's kind of making the, like a triple head. Uh, again, S&P, I think if it had its way, it would try to make a new high. But again, no guarantees of that. Uh, I, I do think something's, something's wrong here to, to see this type of price action. It's just looking very ragged. And volatility is not a sign of bull markets. Uh, so that's not that's not really a good thing if we're expecting this to go higher. Um, real quick here, too, I'm going to look at these uh, the solar storm activity. There hasn't been too much recently. Uh, we just had a G1 storm pass here. on this. We have this triple head forming here on the S&P. So you can see here it's almost making like a head and shoulders. But, you know, it still, still might try to push here. We'll see. But. To me, this does not look good. This is not a good-looking pattern. Uh, but again, you can see the G1, the G1 storm was the last storm that we had. There's just not much activity, but it will start to pick up uh, getting into February. So just keep that in mind. We'll start to look at that um, as February unfolds. You can see that the 50, this still looks very strong from in terms of the simple moving averages. 50 is pushing above the 200 and still widening here. Um, but this is the this is the one that I care about, that I really, really watch. 
Uh, this has been very, very good to us in the last two years. We've had some very nice trades, very nice swing trades. In addition to you know what we do with the polar R squared, we have these these swing trades that we take from time to time. You can see that this uh, the Fed internals are just having this persistent divergence down into here, and so when that happens, uh, the market can do these types of uh, these types of thrusts like this and these types of posturing, but it really can't go anywhere until the Fed really decides to change their stance, and so. The Fed did make this pivot, and they did start to talk about three rate cuts coming. But I do want to talk talk about something that talking about a rate cut is not the same thing as quantitative easing. Uh, so those are two different things. And so we don't even know if they're going to do it. Uh, they're talking about, you know, in March. People are talking about March. We don't really know that. The inflation report came out hotter today than they thought. So that's not really a guarantee. And just because uh, the Fed says an out, a pre-announcement, it doesn't mean anything. The only time – that I've ever seen an announcement by the Fed result in a sustained rally was when we were between quantitative easing one to quantitative easing two, and the Fed actually announced a date they're going to start quantitative easing two, and then the market actually took off and rallied from that news event. But just to say that the rate cuts are going to start to come, I don't think that's enough to get this going. We're going to have to see a change of the posture. We're actually going to have to see proof of that from the Fed, and we just don't see that yet. So to me, uh, I just think this is this is not a very good looking pattern here for the S&P. I think it's got to come back at some point. So just just putting that out there. Um, we do have uh, two important indicators that we look at. We look at, in addition to the Fed use, we look at the quad lunar cycle and the planetary speed index. These are basically kind of in conflict right now. They're kind of going against each other. So this is kind of creating this choppy situation. So as we get further and further out uh, into the month, I think it's going to get more and more difficult for this market. Um, as we get out there and uh, take a look at something like just a simple money flow and I think people have seen this on on daily weekly monthly charts there's a lot of divergences happening I mean the money flow has been falling and falling and falling and this would suggest that we got to come back to this 4423 level uh, this is not this is not a positive picture for the S&P 500 so at some point uh, I think the, the the gravity of this is gonna is gonna start to, to come into the picture here so this is just something that I look at and if we look at the the actual the VXX, uh, I look at this volatility uh, indicator here, and I have this quad lunar cycle here. These are the blue arrows, and you can see that on the 12th, which is tomorrow, this actually comes into a low on volatility. So we're starting to see some of these cycles. They're all kind of starting to line up here one by one by one, and starting to tell us that, hey, maybe this is, this is the time here that this market's going to start rolling over. And I just don't think, you know, when I talk about a sustained rally, uh, I don't consider this rally here a sustained rally. Cer certainly it's powerful, but I'm talking about one that can last six months a year. That can't happen if the Fed internals are still falling like this. That just ha Since 2009, there's no documented cases of that. I go back and I study this data all the time. So until the jet fuel comes back to the party, I don't think this market's going to be going too far. I mean, like, like I said, it could try to jut up to a new high here, but I just don't think in terms of a long, long-term sustained rally, I don't think that that's coming. Now, real quick, I want to talk about the Bradley. We talked about this before, uh, the Bradley barometer. The Bradley barometer, just for people uh, who are tuning in this time, it's essentially it's, a, it's an indicator that measures the effects of transits on financial markets. Uh, we look at long-term aspects. We look at harmonious aspects, hard aspects. And this was developed by Donald Bradley in the 1900s. And so what I've done here uh, is I've taken this original Bradley with uh, software, and we've optimized it. Uh, to come up with an optimized version that has less inversions. So what I'm talking about when I say inversions, the original Bradley barometer would actually have situations where the turn would not necessarily, it wouldn't matter if it was going up or down, you would just look at the turning point. So the turning point is what mattered. Uh, this one, not so much. This is the optimized Bradley, which you can see here, and, and I'm just showing this comparison. This is the forecast that it made ahead of time. Uh, and you can see these numbers here. This is the S&P 500 here to the right. And you can see here the number four here. This is the, the low that it predicted uh, at the end of November here. They actually predicted this. And you can see here this was the market before that. And then afterwards, the market actually did rally uh, and follow that predicted forecast. So this is, a, this, is an, this is not a bad model to look at. And so I've kind of added it to our arsenal here. And so this actually did forecast that rally that we saw. It doesn't necessarily predict the power of the rally. Of course, this was a very, very strong rally, but it did predict the, the rally for us. So where, where does this show us now? Well, we take a look here at this particular uh, barometer. It shows us coming into this high on the 14th. And so this, this particular, uh, so far, this has been very good. 
Uh, this isn't the only thing that we look at. I just want to remind people that this this stuff can be wrong. It's not it's not always right. But so far, this you know from late late November to what we're seeing right now, this has been this has been a very solid uh, forecasting model. This is making a high on the 14th, and so like I okay. said, the seasonal Jay, pattern. Sure. Paying bills yes, now. We'll be back with you in uh, three minutes. Okay, Shane will join us in three minutes, folks. Stay with us. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we're back with Shane Smolian, TheWolfTrader.com. Wrap it up, my friend. Tell us where we're going from here. Well, I think the S&P is going to have some headwinds here. I, I just can't, unless the Fed changes their stance early, I can't really see much more of this. Now, again, it could, I think it could try to pop up to a new high if it wants to, but there's no guarantee of that. I think, uh, to me, what I'm seeing here are signs of erosion here. It's looking kind of ragged. Uh, and again, I, I, I think the curious question here is what's going to happen with this Bitcoin ETF situation? I think it's a very uh, intriguing situation, and I think we should we should explore it more. And we will explore it more. In webinars, we have a webinar each Saturday, so I put put this up on the screen here. Uh, we talk we we talk each Saturday about the market, so it's you can you know if you're more than more than welcome to show up. It's going to be on uh, Wolf Trader Futures uh, YouTube channel, uh, and then on Sundays. Uh, so in addition to just the newsletters, we actually have live accounts, managed accounts, so you can actually see the actual trading results, uh, how 2023 went, uh, and so that's something that we try to do to try to raise the standard of putting what we say in the newsletter. 
uh, with these these auto trading accounts. So if you want to check out, you can check out on each day. Saturday is more kind of broad based. We talk about the markets, and then Sunday is more detailed. We look at how did the actual trades go in the actual live accounts uh, from 2023. So if you want to check that out, you can come to each. It, both are open to the public. Uh, you can reach me at Shane at WolfTraderFutures.com. Uh, that's my email. And then the website is uh, www.wolftraderfutures.com or www.fedjuice.com. So uh, we hope to see you this Saturday. I think we have a good time. Uh, you, there's a live chat. You guys can ask questions. And so uh, just show up uh, bright and early, depending on where you live. It's 8 o'clock on Eastern time. So for those of you on the West Coast, I know it's early. But we also have subscribers in Europe and J Japan. So I try to pick a time where everybody can meet. Uh, but I do think we have a good time. So we look forward to seeing everybody there on this Saturday. Thank you for joining us, my friend. And we'll see you again soon. And may God bless. We'll see you tomorrow, you folks. Very... Stay warm. Rich Anderson will be our guest.